again. Welcome to Sports Center and Dan. Yeah, there's no J. It's, uh, it's the summer. You can take a day off. Why not? Sports Center with and Dan brought to you by McDonald's, the at home edition. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, but if you're like me, probably spent a lot of that time on this weekend in front of the couch watching the protests across America over the death of George Floyd. Uh, Run-ins with police, uh, destruction of property, um, as people come to grips with another death of a black man at the hands of police. A lot of people don't know what to say. A lot of people don't know how to act. A lot of people don't know how to react to seeing the protests. Well, what we can do right now is listen to guys like the Raptors' Fred Van Vliet. It's really unfortunate, but I mean, you know, even more unfortunate, I think we've seen this before. We've seen this movie before, and I think people are tired. I think people are tired of, of the racism and tired of discrimination and the abuse. And, um, you know, unfortunately, this, this man had to lose his life, but I think it was a boiling point and people are just fed up. And I think it's time for a change and everybody's seeing that. And kind of the curtains are being pulled back and you can see everything for what it is and see who stands where. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to move forward through this um, eventually. But right now, it's just a lot of emotion and rightfully so. We're talking about hundreds of years of pain and suffering for an entire culture of people. There's nothing small is going to fix this. Uh, I think, you know, the system that's in place is not for us, it's not for everybody. It's for a specific set of people. And obviously there's ways to, you know, succeed against, you know, in that system, but there's, it's definitely not an even playing field. So there's a lot of things that need to be changed, whether it's laws or policies, or as you can see, some police procedures that maybe need to be updated or guys need to be trained better. Um, but, you know, I don't have all the answers, obviously, but there's, I think the first step is just admitting that, that there's a real problem. The Blackhawks' Jonathan Taves made this statement on Instagram Monday. It reads in part, A lot of people may claim these riots and acts of destruction are a terrible response. I'll be the first to admit that as a white male, that was also my first reaction. But who am I to tell someone that their pain's not real, especially when it is at a boiling point and impossible to hold on to anymore. It's obviously coming from a place of truth. This reaction isn't coming out of thin air. I'm not condoning or approving the looting, but are we really gonna sit here and say that peaceful protesting is the only answer? There's been plenty of time for that, and if it was the answer, we would have given it our full attention long ago. I can't pretend for a second that I know what it feels like to walk in a black man's shoes. However, seeing the video of George Floyd's death and the violent reaction across the country moved me to tears. It's pushed me to think, how much pain are black people and other minorities really feeling? What have Native American people dealt with in both Canada and the US? What is it really like to grow up in their world? Where am I ignorant about the privileges that I may have the others may have that others don't? My message isn't for black people and what they should be doing going forward. My message is to white people, to open our eyes and our hearts. That's the only choice we have. Otherwise, this will continue. Let's choose to fight hate and fear with love and awareness. Ask not what you can do for me, but what can I do for you? Be the one to make the first move. In the end, love conquers all, and he included the hashtag, Black Lives Matter. San Antonio Spurs head coach Greg Popovich had this to say about the situation in the United States. It's unbelievable. If Trump had a brain, even though it was 99% cynical, he would come out and say something to unify people. But he doesn't care about bringing people together, even now. That's how deranged he is. It's all about him. It's all about what benefits him personally. It's never about the greater good. And that's all he's ever been. End quote. With more on athletes' responses to issues of social injustice, injustice, here's ESPN's Jeremy Schapp. In the last week, amid the outrage, sadness, and frustration, with America convulsed in pain and anger, athletes have been speaking up. On Instagram, LeBron James posted these images and wrote, 
do you understand now? Former NBA guard Stephen Jackson, who grew up with George Floyd, spoke in Minneapolis Friday afternoon. You can't tell me when that man had his knee on my brother's neck that that smirk on his face didn't say I'm protected. Oh, that's right. right. That's what it says. Jalen Brown of the Celtics drove 15 hours to protest in his hometown, Atlanta. But it's a peaceful protest, but I definitely want to, being a celebrity, being an NBA player, don't exclude me from no conversation at all. First and foremost, I'm a black man, and I'm a member of this community, raising awareness. Some of the injustice that we've been seeing is not okay. Let's start calling these things what they are. These are murderings. These are lynchings. In recent years, athletes, or at least some athletes, have re-engaged with social justice and civil rights issues, particularly the Black Lives Matter movement. This was LeBron James warming up at the Barclays Center in 2014. In 2016, Colin Kaepernick decided to protest police brutality and institutional racism by not standing in attention for the national anthem. There are a lot of things that are going on that are unjust, people aren't being held accountable for. That decision would cost him his career in football. The message was clear, speak out at your professional peril. But still, there were those who spoke out, mostly black athletes, like Eric Reed and Maya Moore. Chris Long of the Eagles was a notable exception. I support my peers, and if you don't see why you need allies for people uh, that are fighting for equality right now, I don't think you'll ever see it. But this moment, this outrage is generating a different, more widespread response, a response transcending race and defying any reluctance to address issues concerning race. I think it's disgusting. Uh, I think that there's no explanation for it. I mean, to me, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand how that situation can't be remedied in a way that doesn't end in his death. Even among athletes like J.J. Watt, who've rarely weighed in on social justice or civil rights issues, the chorus of indignation has been growing. Here was Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz on Twitter. Can't even fathom what the black community has to endure on a daily basis. Being from North Dakota, I've spent a large part of my life surrounded by people of similar color. So I'm never going to act like I know what the black community goes through, or even has gone through already. I'll never know the feeling of having to worry about my kids going outside because of their skin color. Wentz's teammate, tight end Zach Ertz, and his wife, World Cup champion Julie Johnston Ertz, posted a joint statement on Twitter. They wrote, I'm sorry for the pain and hurt the African-American community has endured by another human. And more than anything, I'm sorry that you feel that you are alone in this situation. But this time, the message from some prominent white figures in the world of sport is, you are not alone. We stand with the black community. And Minnesota Timberwolves coach Ryan Saunders is among those speaking out. His message, others should do the same. Enough is enough, he wrote. Silence and complacency only add fuel to the fire. We must be better. George Floyd deserved better. Perhaps most notably, Tom Brady, never outspoken on issues beyond football, was moved to express his feelings too. The six-time Super Bowl champion posted an image of George Floyd on Instagram with the hashtag justice for Floyd. These demonstrations of support might be dismissed as insignificant or unrepresentative or too little too late, but some are saying this is what is needed, this kind of solidarity to affect change. We need so many more athletes that don't look like me speaking out about this, having the same amount of outrage and using that to voice their opinion, to voice their frustration because that's the only way it's going to change. We've been outraged for hundreds of years. We know what the problems are, but we don't have a lot of solutions. And maybe sports is part of the solution because right now we are devoid of leadership. We are devoid of a path. We're devoid of a plan. And that is a very scary, scary thing, speaking from a black man's perspective. And on Twitter, Dwayne Wade wrote, justice will not be served until those unaffected are as outraged as those who are. All right, no real way to segue into the NHL draft lottery, which goes, uh, what, June 26th. But hey, you need to think about other things just for the time being. So why don't we talk about that? And we're going to be looking at the, the potential top draft picks in this one. And the guy that's going to go number one overall, 
Lexi Lafreniere. Lafreniere. I always mess it up. Here are the guys. Alongside our TSN director of scouting, Craig Button, for his annual assessment of NHL Central Scouting's top rated prospects. Craig, let's go right to the top of the board. Begin with the consensus first overall pick, Alexi Lafreniere of Ramuski. What makes this 18 year old so special? The first thing that comes to mind is his competitiveness. And it's not just about working hard or competing hard. It's about the competitiveness during the most challenging moments of a game and his ability to deliver in those moments. He's always done it. I don't think there's any doubt he'll do that exact same thing in the National Hockey League. You can look at the scouting report. You don't get to be the first overall pick without having very good skills. But along with the competitiveness, it's the sense that stands out for me as well. Because because you can be competitive as you want, but if you don't have the sense of when those moments are and how to take advantage of them, you're not going to be able to be at your very best. Lafreniere does that. And when we look at the projection, he's an elite, complete left winger in the mold of Colorado Avalanche winger Miko Rantanen. Put it all together, and the 2020 World Junior Championship MVP is a lot to become the first Quebec-born first overall pick since Marc-Andre Fleury back in 2003. This is the new normal for J.G. Pajot and Cody Ceci arriving at the rink already dressed and set for their small group sessions on the ice. The Minto Skating Center in Ottawa has strict physical distancing protocols in place at all times. It reminds me a little bit uh... When you first start playing hockey uh, in MAG and you just show up and you're fully dressed, uh, the only difference is your parents are not tying your skate, now you're tying your skate yourself. Uh, but it's, uh, it's obviously uh, different, but it's just fun uh, to be out there. I do feel weird getting dressed in my living room at home, but uh, I mean, it's kind of nice. You're kind of in and out pretty quick and you just throw skates on and you're good. You're on the ice, obviously. Uh, uh, you've got to practice the social distancing even on the ice, uh, which is a little different. Uh, you're used to, uh, to have a lot of contact uh, during hockey. Um, but it's a little different right now, and that's what it is for, for now, and we're getting used to it. can't really hang out in the locker rooms and uh, talk talk together. You can't use the showers after. You're just kind of in your sweaty gear driving home. So it is weird, but uh, it's better than nothing. Jay's not here, I'm not going anywhere, and we're tight for time, so uh, let's dive right into Major League Baseball. Uh, all this time, they've been fighting over money, but they're still talking, and a couple of scenarios were put on the table on Monday. As baseball continues to talk about returning Turner to play. Goes for yes, 15, ESPN's Ballinger reporting that Major League Baseball 18. may propose a much shorter season where the league would pay players a full prorated share of their salaries. The potential MLB season would be somewhere around 50 to 60 regular season games. The exact number still being considered, but the plan would be to return in July. News comes 24 hours after the Players Association submitted a return to play proposal that called for a 114 game season. Coming up, top 10 manager meltdown. This is Philip Wellman arguing a call. He's the Mississippi Braves. He's lost his cool at this point, but it, it's about ready to, to go go in a whole different direction. Oh, yes. Hopefully they got some extra bases in Mississippi. You can't get better on a belly roll than oh, that. A belly crawl than that. <laughs> you can't help but laugh as he kisses goodbye to everybody. Yep, 13 years ago, Philip Wellman did that. Guess what? He's still a manager. He's in the Padre system, still at AA, and he's the manager of the Amarillo Sod Poodles. It's a, it's a real name. And all these in the top 10 are real meltdowns. You don't want to be treated like a man. Then talk to your camera out of here. The Philly fanatic has a stuffed mannequin of a Dodger. Tommy's a little bit hot, I think. 
as he's going to move that over and now look at him go. Now he can. <laughs> he said, you don't make fun of me or my ball club. Because it was the first base umpires call. Benny Martin has been thrown out of this game by Rick Reed. And Benny is not going to go quietly. Uh-oh. 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 He should not have picked up the dirt and thrown it like that. Out comes Coach Drake. He did not like the last call. Needle does not look happy. Here comes a signature move. Uh oh, he might get tossed. And he's gone. Oh no. I think he's going to try and get dirty with the playing surface. Oh, there goes one. There goes two. And this is the biggest outburst we have seen from Coach Drake in a long time. Now he spikes the bucket. What is going on? He is not happy at all. Spiking his hat on home plate, the ultimate sign of disrespect. He's going to pull that bag out. And there goes the bag. What's he going to do with this? He's going to give it to a kid. He just gave the third base bag to a kid. Come out to Newman Outdoor Field. You don't know what you're going to see. Get me out of here. Oh, Earl, you run yourself, Earl. You Get run your yourself. Finger off you hit me. So do it again, and I'll lock you right in your nose. I didn't touch you. You pushed your finger. I did not. No, you you're lying. Damn, you're lying. No, you are. You are lying. You're a big liar. If you no. are a liar, Earl. Mikulik is now sliding into home plate. Joe Mikulik, the manager of the Tourists, now the manager of the Myrtle Beach Pelicans. He's been ejected. He has covered up home plate. Now he's now he takes off his shoes and leaves them at home plate. And he's taking off his jersey and he leaves it at home plate. That's enough, Joe. No. And in the I'm sick and tired of all this bull. Floyd McClendon's going nuts. Uh oh, oh yeah! <laughs> he threw his cap, and he'll be darned if they're going to keep that first base. What is he doing? <laughs> the spirit of Billy Martin alive and well here in Pittsburgh. None of those as bad as producer Tim on a nightly basis. Who Delivered, presented by Mick Delivery. June 1st, 1994, Pacers trailed by 12, entering the fourth quarter in the Garden. Reggie Miller then caught fire, going off for 25 points, including five threes. Indiana rallied for a seven-point win. Reggie Miller delivered. I'm getting Mick Delivery right after we're done here. I'm getting a Big Mac combo with a root beer and a cheeseburger on the side. Uh, you blew it. I mixed, uh, messed up Alexi Lafreniere's name, and I messed up saying distancing. Not hard. See ya.